Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome back to Children's Liturgy of the Word at St. Raymond's. My name is Paula Manchester, and I'm happy that we're able to be together today. I hope that you and your family are doing all well, and that we will be able to enjoy being together in each other's presence in our beautiful church very soon. Let's begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for the gift of this day. Thank you for waking us up this morning, and thank you for our families and friends. Oh God, this time of coronavirus and quarantine has been very stressful. Please help me to be the Christian that you've called me to be through my baptism. Help me to be kind and helpful. Help me to be patient and merciful. Help me to help others who may need me to be an example in these difficult times. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're gonna be using this recording to simulate the regular Children's Liturgy of the Word for Sunday, June 28th. I will read each reading twice so that you quiet yourself at first and then prepare yourself to absorb God's word. Just like we do when we're together for children's liturgy, at the end of each reading, you will hear me say the word of the Lord. And your response should be, thanks be to God. So again, the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. And also, there's going to be a certain important time, and several times actually, when I'm going to ask you to stand. So take a moment now and look around where you're sitting and make sure that at the right moments, you are able to stand up without knocking anything over. So just look around you. When I give you the signal, then you'll know it's time to stand. And I, I just want to, as we talk about this notion of standing, ask you, why do we stand? Why is it at certain times during the liturgy, we're sitting and then we stand up? In fact, sometimes we even kneel. Why is that? If you're thinking, well, we stand up or even go to the greater extent to kneel, it must be because something important is happening, right? It's a signal that our usual stance, which is to sit and to be quiet and be attentive, is magnified even more because something really important is going to happen. I'm gonna to stand to take notice, to pay reverence, to pay attention. My whole body says, this is an important moment. When I kneel, which is even more dramatic, something really important is happening. Something that allows me to understand that I am being reverent, I'm paying attention. That's why when we read from God's word, we stand. And during the consecration, we kneel. All right, so let's move on. We're gonna start with the collect. And I'll ask you to be quiet and listen to me start. And then there's going to be a part where you will respond and I'll give you the cue at the right moment. So as we just do the collect, what we're doing is we're gathering together. Today, we begin with a litany, which is a succession of short prayers. After each prayer, I'll ask you to respond, our one light is Jesus. Let's try that right now. Our one light is Jesus. So many are the light beams of the one light. Our one light is Jesus. So your response is, our one light is Jesus. Through us, Jesus gives the light to the world. Our one light is Jesus. You respond, our one light is Jesus. The light keeps shining in the dark. Our one light is Jesus. 
and you respond, our one light is Jesus. Nothing can put out the light. Our one light is Jesus. And you respond, our one light is Jesus. Okay, so we're now moving into the readings. The first reading, whenever God's friends go, wherever God's friends go, they spread God's light and love. The prophet Elisha and his servant Gehazi brought a ray of sunshine into the life of a rich woman who was kind to them. Let's listen to the story. We're going to turn to 2 Kings chapter 4. One day, Elisha went to the town of Shunem. A rich woman lived there, and she invited him for a meal. Each time Elisha was in town after that, he would eat at her home. The woman said to her husband, I'm sure that this man who comes by here so often is a holy man of God. Let's build him a small room on our flat roof. We can put a bed, a table, a chair, and an oil lamp in the room. He can stay there whenever he comes to visit us. The next time Elisha came to Shunem, he spent the night in his room. Elisha asked his servant Gehazi, What can we do to repay this woman for being so kind? Gehazi answered, She doesn't have a son and her husband is old. Elisha said to Gehazi, Tell the woman to come here. He told her and she came and stood in the doorway of the room. Elisha promised the woman, Next year about this time, you will have a son on your own. The word of the Lord. In your response, thanks be to God. Now let me read that a second time, just to make sure that we are really able to absorb. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha went to the town of Shunem. A rich woman lived there, and she invited him for a meal. Each time Elisha was in town after that, he would eat at her home. The woman said to her husband, I'm sure that this man who comes by here so often is a holy man of God. Let's build him a small room on our flat roof. We can put a bed, a table, a chair, and an oil lamp in the room. He can stay there whenever he comes to visit us. The next time Elisha came to Shunem, he spent the night in his room. Elisha asked his servant Gehazi, What can we do to repay this woman for being so kind? Gehazi answered, she doesn't have a son, and her husband is old. Elisha said to Gehazi, Tell the woman to come here. And he told her, She came and stood in the doorway of the room. Elisha promised the woman, Next year about this time, you will have a son of your own. The word of the Lord. And you respond, Thanks be to God. Now we're going to move to the responsorial psalm. And... When I speak, your response will be, Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. So let's try that together. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The response to oral psalm is Psalm 89, verses 1 through 2 and 15 through 16. All together, Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. O Lord, I will sing of your love forever. Everyone yet to be born will hear me praise your faithfulness. I will tell them God's love can always be trusted and his faithfulness lasts as long as the heavens. Altogether we'll say, Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Our Lord, you bless those who join in the festival and walk in the brightness of your presence. We are happy all day because of you, and your saving power brings honor to us. Altogether, forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. All right, so that was the first time. I'm going to read this a second time, again, so we can really absorb the words and to quiet ourselves to be in God's presence. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Altogether, forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Our Lord, I will sing of your love forever. Everyone yet to be born will hear me praise your faithfulness. 
I will tell them God's love can always be trusted and his faithfulness lasts as long as the heavens. Together, forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Our Lord, you bless those who join in the festival and walk in the brightness of your presence. We are happy all day because of you and your saving power brings honor to us. Together, forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. All right, now we're moving now to the second reading. And we have said that Jesus is the light of the world and we have a share in his light. Listen for what else we share with him. This reading is from Romans chapter six. Brothers and sisters, don't you know that all who share in Christ Jesus by being baptized also share in his death? When we were baptized, we died and were buried with Christ. We were baptized so that we would live a new life, as Christ was raised to life by the glory of God the Father. As surely as we died with Christ, we believe that we also will live with him. We know that death no longer has any power over Christ. He died and was raised to life, never again to die. The word of the Lord. And then we say together, Thanks be to God. Let me read it a second time. So this time you're listening quietly, trying to absorb what is God speaking to us. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, don't you know that all who share in Christ Jesus by being baptized also share in his death? When we were baptized, we died and were buried with Christ. We were baptized so that we would live a new life as Christ was raised to life by the glory of God the Father. As surely as we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that death no longer has any power over Christ. He died and was raised to life, never again to die. The word of the Lord. And we say together, Thanks be to God. Um, that you stand up now and get yourself prepared to hear God speaking to us. Hallelujah, 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 amen. Hallelujah, 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 amen. I, I love Jesus. You, you love Jesus. We, we love Jesus. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, amen. The Lord be with you. And our response is, and with your spirit. So let's say that together and with your spirit. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. And our response is, glory to you, O Lord. When we do the glory to you, O Lord, we actually use our body to reflect our reverence and say not just with words, but with our bodies display the importance of what's about to happen next. So you make the sign of the cross, just like we do when we're together at St. Raymond's. We're first gonna go on our forehead. Make the sign of the cross on your forehead, on your lips, and on your heart. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me also welcomes the one who sent me. Anyone who welcomes a prophet just because that person is a prophet will be given the same reward as a prophet. Anyone who welcomes a good person just because that person is good will be given the same reward as a good person. And anyone who gives one of my most humble followers a cool cup of water just because that person is my follower will surely be rewarded the gospel of the Lord.
And we say, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, you can go back to sitting down and we're gonna have a reflection on what we just heard. So there were three readings and we're going to talk a little bit about what those readings were about. You heard um, many things, right? Alicia had visited a town repeatedly and because he was welcomed, welcome as a prophet, a special space was made for him. And so the host and hostesses were very, very kind and made room for him. That's an important notion, this notion of welcoming. Now, one of the things that I'm going to ask us to think a little bit about is why we are called as one body. And what is this language about being light of the world, that Jesus is light of the world? The metaphor that we're going to use is a candle because you're familiar with candles, right? You understand that candles oftentimes draw us near. Now, I have a candle. This is an electronic candle for safety's sake. Um, I'm not going to light a real candle, but you recognize it, right? Um, this is a, a larger candle, but a smaller candle is one you might be even more familiar with. What does it look like? Can you tell what it is? It's a candle, but it's much smaller than this one. This is the type of one that you might see on a birthday cake. So what makes it so special? Well, first of all, a candle is different from a piece of wood or different from a piece of paper. Candles are made out of what? Wax, right? Candles are made out of wax. And at the very top, there's usually a piece of string called a wick. So what happens when you have a candle? Do you just celebrate by walking around with one like this or one like this? No, these are potentially very exciting, but as they are right now, there's nothing really special about them. But they become quite special when they are lit. So let me show you something that you might be familiar with. Do you know what that is? It's a match, right? And this is a matchbox. And on the side of the matchbox, there's an area for striking. Now, I am not going to do that right now because I want to practice safety. Um, so only with your parents or another responsible adult should you ever use matches. So just because I'm showing you this does not mean that we need to act on it right now. So let's put the match safely back in the box and you wait to the right moment with your parents or a responsible adult to actually light the candle. To simulate what actually happens though, I'm gonna turn on this electronic candle. This is much more safe than a real candle because see, I turned it on and it's all bright. And the reason that we're using the language and the metaphor of a candle is to talk about what light means. We heard in the reading that um, Jesus is the light and we are drawn to the light. Just like during your birthday um, or one of your friend's birthday, people say happy birthday, uh, we light candles, we have a cake, and it's very exciting. We are drawn to it. Even in mass, we use candles, right? We usually have candles around the altar or maybe throughout the whole church. And these candles are lit and they draw people together because they represent a unifying force. It's Jesus that's calling us together. We may be from various homes, right? We don't all live in the same home. We may all not go to the same school. We're not the same age. We don't all look alike. And yet when we come to church, we are drawn together as one family. And we're drawn because Jesus is the light and he asks us to partake in that same kind of drawing together. So it's very exciting. In the first reading, we heard how Elisha was welcomed because he was recognized as a prophet. In the gospel, Jesus tells us that those who welcome prophets 
will be rewarded like prophets. But he goes even further because he says that anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. So we're representing Jesus. Jesus draws people to him when we bring people together because of our behavior, because of our values, because of how we treat each other. We're drawing others to us. And when other people welcome us into their hearts, into their homes, into a friendship, they're welcoming Jesus also. So let's go back one more time to this concept of the gospel that's talking about this light and the ability to draw people in. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. Basically, we are representing Jesus as the body of Christ. And when people welcome us, they're welcoming Jesus. But it doesn't matter if you are Father Chris, if you are Deacon Bill, or if you're Paula Manchester, we all play a different part within the body of Christ. So you, you specifically have the ability to draw people in, in the same way that I can do it, your mom and dad, your sisters, your friends, people who participate at St. Raymond's, or Deacon Bill or Father Chris. We draw people in to the light who is Jesus. All right, so that was a little bit of a reflection on our readings for today. I'm going to now turn off the light. So just in case that you had a real candle on, you obviously extinguish it, right? You blow it out. In this case, I'm going to turn it off um, for safety's sake. Now we're moving to the next part of the liturgy, which is the profession of faith. And again, I'm gonna ask you to stand up and it will be um, an interactive, I will tell you your words and you can speak along with me. So stand up now, make sure you have a clear space around you. With each question that I ask you, your response will be, yes, we do. So let's practice that now. Yes, we do. Do you believe that God our Father in heaven is the source of all light? And we respond, yes, we do. Do you believe that Jesus, God's son, was sent into our world to be our light? Yes, we do. Do you believe that we share in the light of Christ through our baptism? Yes, we do. Do you believe that the Holy Spirit unites you with all other Christians and helps you to, to be the light of the faith alive? Yes, we do. Children, when you go back to your home or when we finish our mass, ask your parents if they still have the candle that you were given when you were baptized. Ask to see it. They may have to search around a little bit, but ask and see if you can see that very candle. And maybe that candle can be put in a prominent place. You may have to dig out from your um, drawers to find that candle. But if you can find that candle, or another candle if you can't find that one, put it on your kitchen table. Put it in a place where you guys can look at it all the time. And when you see it, think about that. And think about the light that it represents. Think about the light that you represent. Think about the light of Jesus who draws others near and how we participate in that drawing together. So now let us pray. This is the prayer of the faithful. God our Father wants us to live in the light of his love. Therefore, let us pray that all forms of darkness will be overcome. And your response will be, oh God, hear our prayer. That our Holy Father and all bishops, priests, and leaders of the church will shine more of Christ's light into the world. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh God, hear our prayer. That the adults in our parish will carry the light of Christ into their homes, neighborhoods, and workplaces. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh God, hear our prayer. That we and all the children of our parish will carry the light of Christ into our homes, neighborhoods, and schools. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh God, hear our prayer. That anyone in our community who might be living in darkness of sin will turn to the light. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh God, hear our prayer. 
I'm going to be quiet for a little bit, and I'm going to ask you to think about any prayers that you may have. Prayers for yourself, prayers for your family, prayers for your friends, prayers for the community in Philadelphia. I'm going to, let's be quiet for a moment and think about any petitions that you would like to offer up. And all together we say, O oh God, hear our prayer. Lord, we trust in the power of your light and your love to totally change our world. We promise to wait with patience for the great day when darkness is completely overcome and all the world honors you as the one light. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so this point is where we would end our children's liturgy of the word and we would return back to the rest of the congregation. Um, since we're not together for that, um, I'm going to wrap up now and I thank you so much for your attention. Um, you should have um, a sheet, I think it's in PDF form, that you can print out and you can ask your parents if they can help you. This is the sheet, this is the handout that we would normally distribute at the end of Children's Liturgy of the Word. Um, it's a two-sided sheet that helps do a um, review of today's lesson. And I encourage you to um, work with your parents um, to both review the readings that we used, as well as look at the prayers and to think a little bit about the key messages from today's readings. Um, on the back of the sheet, there's an activity that's kind of fun. You can think about uh, fill in the blank with some word choices that they have here. So you can complete that. Um, and then finally, down at the bottom of this, there is um, a faith focus and family activity section that talks a little bit about some activities you might do to think about a little bit more about how we're drawing others near and specifically think about how we can welcome others to our home. So I encourage you to print out that form, this um, two-sided handout, um, and review it. But until next time, have a great day.